Uh, it's the first time we've been on a, a big festival run. Normally they're quite sporadic, we do a festival every couple of months. Um, that's what's generally happened, but it's the first time we've got together and had a, you know, a real go at just going bang, 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 get lots of festivals done. And um, we've done quite all this year. We've had some, some good fill-ins, we've been uh, playing some big stages, and the crowds have been incredible as well. And I really do think that's a good sign of the progression of the whole of the whole band and its business. You know, it's, um, it's, we've been working at it for a long time, well over 10 years now. We've been grinding it very hard, and I think, uh, yeah, it's, everything seems to be growing. Uh, the fan base is getting bigger. More people are spreading the word, really. You can tell, you know, big audiences, great vibe. Uh, couldn't ask for anything more, really. It's been awesome. First one was Rock Camp Ring, uh, and it was, yeah, that was our first, our first time there actually, and uh, very, very surprising. First time we played those festivals. First time we've done a German festival, really, other than Euroblast. Um, it was fairly nuts. It reminded me of um, Saint Wave in Australia. Same kind of setup. You've got a ton of bands, um, an amazing backstage area for everyone to be in, and a nuts amount of people, like more than we used to really play to, which is kind of cool. It makes you hope that one day you can step up to that, that being a show and not a festival. It's really cool to do things like uh, Rock and Ring and Rock and Park because they're hugely uh, famous within the rock world and metal world. So it's nice to get there and see what it's all about, see, all, see that it is in fact right up there and it's not just um, people getting overexcited. So it was really cool to turn up from a band's point of view and just have something that worked immediately. It's just everything was set in place, it just made life super easy for us to play. And the crowds were really cool, really cool. Um, it was the first gig we have done in about two months, so it was kind of... Shit, how do I get back into this? How do I play again? But got straight on there, it was fun. It was a fun first show. Um, I think it was about 4,000 people-ish. Kind of like the biggest one we've done in a while as well. So, no, it's a good one. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's the first one, so we had to sort of dust off the cobwebs a little bit. You know, get back into the swing of playing. Brilliant fun, there are free cocktails. And what more do you want? It's taken a lot of time for people to get used to the songs. You know, we, we released, the set, released the album last September and then we toured straight after the release. So I don't think people really understood the songs. They knew that, you know, they'd heard them and they were still getting used to them. But you can definitely tell we've had a lot of time to listen to them because, the, you know, you can see people singing along, they know the words. You know, and it's, it takes us a lot of time to see that progression when you release an album. So it isn't like the olden days when you used to go out there write songs and tour new songs before you release an album. It's the opposite way now, so uh, you don't really see that progression until a year onwards. But it's been great, yeah. People are really responding well. It's, it's, the new songs seem to have gone down pretty well. Um, I think, uh, for the most part, is that the band's grown quite considerably from the release of that record, so there are quite a few new people coming out to see us. And from talking to fans after the shows, I, at least one in three people have never seen us before, so I think for quite a lot of them, the new stuff is actually the first stuff they've heard. So and that's kind of reflected in the, um, yeah, in, the, in the audience response, I think. We've accidentally written a very accessible album. Like, whenever we write stuff, it's never with, you know, a view to making a particular song or a particular few songs accessible or whatever. It's just, we write music. And with the last record, the techie side of things seemed to chill out a little bit and wanting to play or overplay things and we just kind of settled into writing music and um, yeah, 
you know, it seems that the, the crowd have kind of, or our fans have come on board with that and they're uh, enjoying the, the music. And... Well, you've got to remember, we've been playing metal festivals and let's face it, Polaris isn't particularly that metal. So I'm, I'm always a little concerned that a festival crowd might not be that into what we're doing. You know, or, or if they don't know us, they might not be so excited because we're not going circle bit and all shit like that, which you often see. So it's for us, um, we don't tend to do those sorts of things at all. It's, so it's really cool to get a reaction from a metal crowd and to have myself proved wrong, to see them enjoying what we're doing, to see them singing along. Since Polaris was released, it's incredible. It tells us that we're going in the right direction for us at least, because everything's got so much bigger for us. This is the first sort of season we've done at festivals. You'd expect to be at the bottom, and we're not, you know. We haven't opened one stage yet, I don't think. I think we've been at least two or three in, all like today, one beneath the headline, which is perfect, especially for a band on their first run. I live quite close to Download Festival, Donington, and I've always gone to Download and uh, watched all my, uh, my all my big inspirations on on those stages and in, in that arena. And um, to be actually there, you know, on the encore stage with you know 15,000 heads, a sea of heads just singing along and showing their appreciation. That's uh, yeah, that was that was special. So to turn up and see the big stage, I was like. Okay, right, we're really playing Download Festival. This is a big deal. It was surreal, really. Download has been a festival that we've, we've never even had an offer to go to before. Like, this was the first time we played it, and it was, for me, a step up from Sonosphere. We played Sonosphere um, a couple of years ago, and that seemed huge. And I think Download was probably a bigger crowd, even though it was the second stage. Um, the only way I can really describe it is as if you stood looking out at like the Grand Canyon or something like that. You've just got a, an infinite view of something that doesn't even look real. And it's the same when you play a festival like that. You have a sea of heads that is endless. And even looking back at the photos from it now, you're like, whoa, that was nuts. And at the time, it doesn't feel too strange. You're just playing a show. You've probably got a little bit more adrenaline than you would at a normal show just because of the, the step up that it is. Um, but. It's, it's just a surreal experience doing something like that and then going and playing a much smaller show around the corner. <laughs> Um, well, it's a festival I've wanted to play all my life. Donington has yeah, been a massive part of the British rock, of British rock history, and um, I've been to probably the vast majority of them since 1995, which is quite crazy. Um, so yeah, it was a real lifetime achievement playing Download. And it was nice to have played like Rock in Ring and Nova Rock's a bit of a practice for it, because like the first Rock and Ring that's kind of like you know gear anxiety. Does this all this? Is this all plugged in right? Then got to this one. We've kind of been the in the flow of it all. Try to not let the nerves get the better of me and just stay kind of level-headed and just focus on singing really well. Um, we always want to try and come across as, as professional as possible. We want to be one of those bands that can really recreate the album live. You know, you see a lot, a lot of bands tend to grid it up a bit, make it a bit more heavy, a bit more looser on stage, but we want to be nice and tight and professional, so that takes a lot of focus. And it's, all, it's sometimes really hard to find that balance between performing to people but also focusing on your technique and the way you execute it. It's really cool to finally do the to do an, an outdoor festival uh, that in the UK that wasn't like opening. You know, so we were a little bit on the bill, and it was nice to know that there were people there to see us as well as not just hanging around and being curious, as a lot of people are at festivals. It's, it was awesome to find out that at the end of it, we had one of the largest crowds of the weekend, which was. Uh, on that second stage, uh, with the exception of headliners. So that is quite strange because, again, in the UK, we've never considered ourselves to be that big. So it's nice to have finally had a little bit of a crossover and to have uh, proved the people that were not necessarily convinced um, in us to prove them wrong.
there's always more pressure on the big stages and it's not not pressure in like a, a nervous way you'll just get really really excited before we play the big stages and i'll have to chill out a little bit the small stages now are just a lot of fun you have way more fun you i feel more freedom to do uh, the things that are in my head so I'll have a drum idea that I wouldn't try on a bigger stage just from having less confidence. <laughs> um, I'll do those on the small stages but when we're on the big stage I'll just try and nail it. Normally sound is better when it's a smaller intimate stage just because we like quite controlled tight sounds but there's been something really cool about playing the larger stages and Seeing that what we're doing actually transposes quite well to big stages because it, it makes you feel good about what you're going to do in the future and if you're going to take things to like stadiums and arenas. I was really surprised. Our sound, which is quite intricate, there's lots of little things going on, it worked really well. So I can't wait to get a chance to do things like that again. Especially if it's like an arena tour, it'll be just so much fun for the band. And we, we always try to get a bit of a positive vibe out of things on stage. It's nice to see that at a festival where when it's open air, things tend to just dissipate. You know, unless everybody knows every single word of every song or it's a big famous band or something anthemic, it tends to just disappear. Whereas it's really nice to keep that energy going. Everybody was there from start to finish. Which is uh, something that has only really happened on this album at all for us, on this side. It's a massively positive thing. At the moment I think I'm preferring these kind of one-off shows just because you have a bit more time to relax. It's probably the wrong way to think about it, but it's quite nice to do gig and to like, ah, enjoy the rest of the day, watch some other bands. Plus you're playing in front of, you know, ten times as many people, which is always fun. Um, the bigger stages are fun. I mean, there's as much as you can kind of talk about the art of it and the technical elements, there's something really fun about getting to, to turn up music very loud and having the control over that. And especially, there are some, some bits of the set which are my, some of my favourite riffs. And to be able to just take a moment in the middle of the set, just crank it up and stand back and just grin is, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's very, very fun. Uh, so I, I've had a great time. It's been weird hearing how it's translated because you're used to kind of getting that, trying to get that really punchy sound in a, in a small venue where it's you know, where it kind of punches you in the face and you can't always do that as much in the big stages so you find different moments work better, you know, there are some, some bits in a small club where there's a particular riff which hits particularly hard which doesn't translate as well on a big stage but then other bits which just sound amazing so it's been, it's been really fun experimenting with that and seeing what works and trying to figure out how to get the sound to scale up a little bit but it does very well, it works, they, they, you know, they're all, they're all producers and engineers and they thought a lot about the sound so it's so when it gets to my stage, it's fairly easy. You turn it up and it just sounds good. Grass Pops, another one of those festivals that's very famous. It's been around for years and everybody's playing. Like today, you've got Slayer, you've got Kajira, Ghost. And um, a little band called Tesseract played today, which was fun. Huge video screens behind us, so it's really impressive to walk onto that and go, Oh, that's nice. You know, normally a tent stage you don't expect much at all, but clearly the Belgians and the Germans really know how to do tent stages. They're really, really well thought out. I can't wait to come back again, especially because it's Belgium. Belgium is one of those fun places. Yeah, very first time playing Grass Pop Fest. Um, we're in Belgium. Down the first left. Um, life isn't too bad. Well, just five minutes ago, I enjoyed watching Killswitch Engage from side stage. I noticed that Adam D has his own beer tech, which is something I aspire to. <laughs> uh, it's nice being in Belgium where like the stock beer is Jupiler and Lef. I need to stop basing this all on the alcohol. <laughs> no, <laughs>
five week tour with Kajira in America. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and it's kind of, again, it's the next step up in terms of venue sizes. they kind of like 2,000, 3,000 cap venues. So it's nice just to play some like, decent big venues. So I'm looking forward to that one. It's really cool to step into that role of what you expect a band should be doing. I always think we should be out there supporting larger acts. It's nice to finally step into that, into a mainstream sort of scenario. We've got a couple more festivals to go. Um, I think we're playing Spain and Finland and the Czech Republic. And then it's going to be downtime, writing for the new album and uh, just focusing on the creation of new music for as long as it takes. Right now, actually, we're in album four mode. We're just collaborating ideas and sharing them with a view to writing album four, which is sounding completely different already. We've got some like sketches, some ideas, and we're getting Aiden, our sound guy, front of house guy, a lot more involved. He was involved quite a lot in in, in Polaris, but he's going to be a lot much more involved in this one. Um, and we're just going to try and get everyone more involved as a band um, for this one. I've been working with Tesseract for I think coming up on eight years now, like that, uh, since long before the first album was released. Uh, I started off as a driver and then they found out I did sound and I got roped into that. Well, I mean, the, the next album, I, what I like about it is I don't think anyone knows what it is yet, and so when they asked me to be involved with it, uh, I, I've worked quite a lot on the EP that's about to come out, Arrive, and, um, and so they asked me to be involved in the album and I really wasn't sure what they wanted, but something I found during working on Arai was that I could do something which I was worried didn't sound Tesseract enough and by the time I took it to Apple and he did his thing over it it just it came out something like Tesseract you know you put it through that filter and it just that's what it comes out like so with that in mind I just send them a, uh, like a folder worth I think like 15 or 16 ideas some are, some are really simple piano chords some are fully developed electronic ideas um, and the reaction's been, been great so it's just nice to be included in that from day one and you know I, I have no idea what it's going to end up sounding like and I really like that, it's really, it's really exciting I think the band are excited about it as well, you know, so. So it'll be interesting to see if we get that raw energy that we've been, that we have on stage and get that, hopefully it translates well to studio and I've got a feeling we'll have to step back the technology a little to try and capture that but we're quite lucky we've got three or four people within the band that really quite interested in exploring avenues and have got the experience to take things to a level where it should work as a group. So we could hopefully have something that we're all really quite happy with come September next year.